recording. Hi. So uh, we don't have that many participants, but that's okay. Uh, we're going to uh, get rid of the videos here so we don't get any distractions. But feel free to use the chat box as we go for questions and, of course, for comments. Every comment helps us learn. And every question, of course, is brilliant because um, it also helps us learn and um, understand how others are viewing things because we don't always view things and learn the same way. So welcome once again. I'm really happy to see you. Uh, this is uh, Nelly Deutsch. And yes, you're hearing my voice. Um, I don't know if you really saw me, but I wanted to uh, have the video off so we don't get distracted, even in the recordings. So keep um, using the chat box. It sometimes help. It helps. It helps me. But um, sometimes uh, participants don't like to use it. So it's up to you. So in week two, you did amazing work with Google Docs on your Google Drive. And one of the questions that participants had in the live online session last time, and um, one of the questions that you kept asking each other was, where do I get the Gmails? Where do I get other participants' emails? So one suggestion, I believe Zara mentioned it last time, was to go into participants, which is uh, on the left. Okay, if you go into people, you can actually get their, um, let me get a pointer here. You can get their emails, okay? So if you go into this area, you can get into their emails. And if they have a Gmail, that's not a problem. If they have another email, it might be a problem. Another way of doing it is uh, if you're a member in week one, many of you have forgotten. In week one, you had a chance to fill in a form. So let me go back to week one so everybody sees it. Week one. So I'm going back to week one. Here we are in the introduction. There's a lot of information, so don't feel bad if you miss anything or if you forget. The more we enter the um, course management system, the layout, the better, the better we get. We get more familiar with what it looks like and we can see more, which is what we want our students to do, especially when it comes to text. We want them to be able to see more each time they go into the text. So it's similar on this um, Moodle course or session, Evo session. So this is the form that you had to fill in. I don't know if you recall, but most of you had done it. Not everybody, from what I saw. There are only 32 responses and there are over 100 participants. So if you haven't done it, you might want to do it now because you will need each other's Gmails. So you can see I filled it in, I filled it in twice. But what I can do is I can go in to see previous responses. And I made this available. You don't have to when you create forms and we'll learn about forms and what we can do with them in the classroom next week. But today we're going to be talking about presentations and Google Slides and how we can use that in the classroom. But let's get the emails because we wanna share that's the point of tools for collaboration. It's not only about the tools, it's also about collaborating and having a growth mindset because collaborating is not easy. Sometimes we like to keep our own work, we don't wanna share it, we're intimidated by it, or we just don't want anybody to touch it, which is fine. So it takes time for teachers as well as for students to open up to collaboration and be able to share openly in order to learn, because that's the mo actually the goal of uh, Tools for Student Collaboration. It's teamwork and peer learning. And if you noticed in weeks one and two, you have been collaborating with each other. 
in the discussion forums, and on the Google Docs. You have been asking questions, you have been making suggestions, answering each other. You've been learning from one another, and that's what it's about. The instructor's role, my role, and um, Rosemary's role is just to be there in case you need technical support or other kind of support. But the idea is for everyone to teach everyone. It's peer learning as well as peer teaching. So I noticed that many of you shared your Google Docs, but you only made it viewable for certain people and not for the whole class. So where do you get many of the participants Gmails? First of all, from the participants list, but also from this doc that we used that I asked you to fill in in the first week. So let's see what's there and how easy it is to simply copy the Gmails and add them in the share area of your docs. So last week, in week two, it was Google Docs. In week three, you're going to share everything you do and give full editing rights, not just viewing rights, but editing rights to all the members of this Evo session. So let's go into, let me get rid of that. Let's go into see previous responses. Okay, so let me open it up. Uh, some of you saying you can't hear me. You might want to um, tell Barbara, if you can text her, and tell her to refresh the page, and then she may be able to hear me better. Can anybody else not hear me? Oh, you can hear. Yeah, that sometimes we need to refresh. Okay, great. All right. If one person can, then that means the others need to refresh their pages. Okay, great, Barbara. <laughs> Welcome back. Sorry about that. But anytime, help each other. If somebody feels that they can hear, just tell them to refresh. That's the message. So right now, if I go into responses, there are 32 responses, which is not enough. That means some of you may have missed this form and not filled it in. So please fill it in. So we've got lots of information here about 31 out of the 32 have Gmail accounts. And then we've got 31 responses because one of the participants doesn't. You can always fill it in again. Okay, so feel free to do it again or do it for the first time. Then we just simply copy all these Gmails. Okay, copy them and we're going to add them to our share area. So we can add it with everybody and give them editing rights. Only these people and give them editing rights. Okay. Are there any questions about where to find the Gmails? Let me know in the chat box if you now understand. Just write the word you understand or understood. So I'll get an idea of at least those that are here. And hopefully you'll help others in case they have the same questions. Great. Okay. So as I said, it's not easy to collaborate, even though it sounds like, you know, why wouldn't it be easy? It's, it's such a wonderful thing. But no, it's not. It takes uh, practice. It takes um, having another attitude. And it will bring a growth mindset. You will open up and you'll see that your life and your students' lives will change as a result of this openness to sharing and working together. And that's what we want, okay? So um, this is a very humanistic and very caring goal or aspirations if we can do that. All right, so I'm going to go back now. Okay, let me go back to the course. Okay, so there it is. There's the form. It's in week one for those who want to know. Okay, week one. So in week two, again, when you share your document, make sure that you give those whose Gmails you have editing rights so they can add to it. Many of you did, but some didn't, and some chose whom to give it to. In the classroom, you're going to give it to everybody. All your students are going to have 
each other's Gmails. If you're working with um, adults, it's not a problem. With teenagers, it's not a problem. If you're working with very young learners, then um, you can allow all of them. In other words, you just open the document and you share the link. Anyone who has the link can edit. But you have to be very careful because we don't want strangers walking in. But in most cases, people will not find your, um, your link unless you make it completely public. So don't make it public unless you want to. Okay, sometimes we do want to make it public because we want the world to collaborate with us. So that's what we did in week two. You also use Kezana. I hope you enjoyed it. How many of you liked Kezana? By the way, Kezana is still in development. If you like Kezana, say yes. Okay, great. I see a yes there. Um, Kezana is developing all the time. I don't know if I mentioned this, but I've been um, using Kezana for a number of years when they started, when it was completely free, and then they started having both the free version and the paid version, which is what they have now. But um, they're still developing, and they're interested in working with TESOL, with teachers of English to other learners, or um, EFL, English as a foreign language, English as a second language, and so on. They're interested, so your input's very important to them. They generally ask questions to see how you're doing. So you may receive email from them. Uh, asking how you're doing. So feel free to let them know because they're learning. They're also learning from you as you use uh, Kzen. Okay, so Kzena was the tool that we used. But I want you to remember that was week one and you also had to reflect. And this is the session for today. I want you to keep in mind, now we're going into week three, keep in mind that it's not about the tools. It's about using tools for student collaboration. And the key here is on student collaboration. That's what's most important. There's a question there, can it be used outside Google? Can you explain that, Chilla? Ah, Kezana, okay, I got you. Uh, Kezana right now can only be used, I believe, with Chrome, it's an extension. It's also an add-on. Add you can't use it on Safari, it doesn't work. I think they're trying to also um, go off Google and become independent, which is why they became an extension. The minute you become an extension, you're independent. <clears throat> so that could be a possibility. You're thinking, I guess, of Microsoft maybe, I think Microsoft has other tools and Microsoft is trying to go on the cloud as well. Oh, you're a Mac user. Okay, Chilla, so am I. If you're a Mac user, then you can forget about Microsoft um, and continue using Google Docs, but you need to use Chrome. You can't use Safari. If you have any questions about Mac, I'll be using an Apple product. I'll be happy to help you. Uh, I use both. I also use Windows, but I prefer my uh, Mac machines. So feel free to ask me, but make sure you say I'm a Mac user. It's important because the systems do um, differ. All right, so this is week three, and congratulations, you made it. How many of you got your badges for week two? Let me know in the chat box, yes, for badge. If you didn't get your badge, the reason may be that you um, didn't respond to one other person. Uh, great, Maria, congratulations. you may need to respond to others. Now, when you respond to someone else, you have to respond in their thread. So everyone, when you start a discussion, it's your thread and people respond to you and that's how they get credit for responding and then their box gets ticked off. The minute you start a discussion and then respond to someone else on their discussion thread, you will get your box, as they say, ticked off. 
all right? But it takes time, so don't worry about it. All right, so week two is a bit different. We're going to go into teaming up and uh, we're going to discuss team. Excellent, Barbara. So you also got your badge for week two, which means that you've got two badges. Congratulations. That's great. All right, we'll discuss badges near the end, how badges uh, help. There's also level up, if you notice, level up. And I'm wondering what levels you're at. Notice mine is only one because I'm not a, I'm not a student, so I don't do very much. I don't get levels, but you should be at level six or seven. And that's another way of gaming and encouraging students to uh, do the work because the more you do, the more levels you get. So you can notice that about leveling up. All right. So this week, it's um, Google Drive again, Google Slides this time. You need audio, you need to have a microphone, and you need Canva. Okay, of course, you're also going to use um, Screencast-O-Matic, but not your video, not your webcam. So week two, week three, uh, we're going into Canva. You can log in using Google or Facebook if you already have an account. If you don't have an account, you need to sign up. And the sign up notice, if you click on the link from, um, is right here, from the uh, Evo session, you will get the sign up and then you sign log in each time. Let me know if there's a question about logging in. How many of you have tried to go into our group Canva? Let me know. If you've tried, we're talking about group Canva. You can do this with your students. You can create a group for your students and under Canva for free. Notice Canva also has a um, paid version just ignore it. I don't pay them. I don't intend to pay them. And I've been using Canva for a number of years, over five years for sure. And I don't intend to pay. And everything I need is there without having to pay. So there's no need. Um, I use it with my students. They get a kick out of it because they're not alone. You know, sometimes being able to be together with others is uh, helpful for them. Okay, feel free to add to the chat box. My question was, have you tried Group Canva? Yes, no. Have you tried it? You, it, you don't have to yet. We haven't started week three, even though some people have started. Okay, that's fine, Barbara. Okay, so you'll have a chance to try it later on. But I just want you to be aware that you too can create a group for your class or classes for each class, or you can have it together. You can actually learn to collaborate with some of your classes where your students uh, collaborate, not just one class, but all your classes, you can join them. It's also fun to have different age groups with young learners or different levels with older learners. So I'm gonna go back here if I can into week three. All right, so notice I hid weeks four, five, and uh, the rest of it for now, so it doesn't distract you. There's a support form at the top. Please feel free to add your questions here, questions of the week. But if you have a question from last week, don't worry if you add the questions in the wrong place. It's fine, I'll be able to move your questions. I can do that. So there's a video here on, um, Sorry, I'm in the wrong place. I'm in week two. Should be week three. It's Google Slides. Okay, so there's a, an image of where you go in. And there's also a um, video on Canva to help you. There's a video on Google Slides. And it's good to see, even though you've used Google Slides, slides before, Oh, sorry, Rosemary, I didn't know you couldn't hear me. Sorry about that. 
always refresh, refresh. And then um, we're going to go into teaming up. Okay, so watch the videos and team learning. What is team learning? Any ideas? What comes to mind when you think of team learning? There's an article that you're going to read about it. And then there's a question here that you'll answer. And the question is, how will you use it, team learning, with your students? Think of at least one possible activity. It doesn't have to be great. You can think about it and then continue think about it, thinking about it, and then keep adding to your answer. So what is team, teamwork? Teamwork, what is it? In a word or two, what would you say teamwork is? The first thing I think of when I think of teamwork is the kitchen. My husband loves to cook and bake. I mean, it only happened recently, the last couple of years. Um, that's because he works at a high-tech company, I guess, and a lot of high-tech people are into uh, cooking. I don't know. Um, but a lot of uh, the guys at his um, workplace also cook and, and bake. So uh, we team up and we work together as a team. Um, he's the, um, the chef and I'm the sous chef. So it's, it's kind of, it's teamwork. And we come up with amazing tastes. <laughs> it's absolutely amazing. So that's an example of teamwork. It's a group of students working together on a mutual goal. Exactly, but it doesn't have to be students. It could be in general. So if you think about my case, real life, okay, uh, Barbara, think of real life situations where there's teamwork. You know, sometimes we focus too much on what's happening at school, but school is just temporary. The kids are gonna be, or the kids, Students, whatever age they are, they're going to be going out to the world. Um, college students, they need, they need us for more than uh, content. They need us for life skills or soft skills, whatever you'd like to call it. Um, sports, yeah, Rosemary. But real life, think of you. Where do you have teamwork? Obviously, you're working in teams um, in this Evo session. Not rigid teams, but you're working as a whole team. The whole class is a team and you're helping each other and working together. That's right, a lot of support. Team sports is a great example, actually, Rosemary, because um, if they don't work as a team, they're not gonna make it. One of the reasons a lot of teams win matches is because they work as a team and they're not just individuals, but sports is not all of life, okay? At the workplace, they'll be uh, working in teams. And, and the advantage of working in teams is that you learn. There's team learning, which is so important. That's the actual outcome. Okay, there's a common goal, of course, but there's learning going on, a lot of learning about yourself, about the other, about the task, about... Um, challenges about what works, what doesn't work. So actually, um, there's a lot of learning beyond the specific goal, which is so important to our lives. <clears throat> so you'll be discussing teamwork and read the article. It's quite interesting. It's about a professor. Uh, Amy Edmondson and others, and she even wrote a book on it that I have at home. I think that um, it's of great value. You don't have to buy the book, of course, but you can read about it. You can also find more information about team learning. Actually, there isn't that much, and there should be more, I guess, because people are still trying to uh, probe their way through it. Jigsaw grouping is an example. Yes, that's classroom activities. Excellent, uh, Rosemary. All right, so there's a question here in teamwork and team learning, because that's what we're getting at, the learning. That's what teachers, that's what we want to gain from our students, learning. We want them to learn. Uh, what you're going to do in this week, you're going to team up, but you're going to team up in an 
a different way. I was going to say interesting. You may not find it interesting, but it's definitely different. I'm sure none of you have done it in the past. It's actually uh, something that I came up with. Maybe others have come up with it as well. I don't know, but um, I think it's my idea. And, but I'm sure others can think of it as well. It's not that brilliant. But it's based on 50 debate topics. This is what I do in my classes. The uh, students, and I'm talking about young learners in my case, but it could be any age. It's appropriate. It's for high school. And it's also for college students. Um, EFL students specifically, or general students, and it's 50 debate topics. If you click on the 50 debate topics, you will get 50 debate topics. What you're going to do is you're going to choose a topic of your choice. Okay, so you choose a topic, and um, before you do anything, you choose it. And then you follow these instructions. You team up, and the teaming up is right here. Okay, this is all online, of course, so it looks a little bit different. Face to face, um, I'll tell you how I do it. But usually I do it through WhatsApp. In other words, I get students because in the classroom, I have a lot of students. I have over 36, 40 in the classroom. And it's very hard to get things done unless the kids team up. So at the beginning of the year, I have them team up and then they choose the topics. I have them team up in different ways. I use um, WhatsApp and they do it in the classroom. They, um, they only talk, we have one main WhatsApp for the whole class and then they start texting each other in the WhatsApp and about the topics, so one kid might say, I want to do this to topic number one, it goes by numbers. I want to do topic number one. Who wants to do topic number one? And then, okay, they have, um, usually I decide if it's 36, then it's um, divided by four, so it's nine uh, teams, four on a team. And then I, once they have four people, one of them decides to start a WhatsApp group, and then they share the group with me as the admin, and that's how they group up through the WhatsApp in the classroom. And believe me, it's completely quiet. And they get it done in a couple of minutes, no more than 10 minutes. If I would do this in any other way, it would take a long time and there'll be a lot of noise in the classroom. Now, if you like noise, that's fine. But the problem with noise is the kids don't get things done. It's just a lot of noise and things don't get done. And I'm one of those people that like things to get done. So that's why I do it through the WhatsApp. And if you want to know more about it, ask me. I use WhatsApp a lot. I used to use Facebook for groups. I don't anymore because um, young people today don't like Facebook. They prefer Instagram. You can also have an Instagram if you like, if you want to go there. But I find WhatsApp a lot easier to work with for groups. So teaming up. You can't go into the teaming up unless you first do the following. In other words, it's restricted. So look at the restrictions. The restrictions are uh, the act, you need to introduce yourself. How many of you introduced yourself? I bet everyone introduced themselves. Okay, in week one, that's what you did. So most of you introduced yourselves, but if you haven't, you need to do it introduce yourself and reflect. That was the first thing. And then um, you also need to um, do the Google Docs for discussion in week two. That has to be marked. And you need to reflect in week two. Once you do all of those activities, you're able to see teaming up based on the 50 debates. So for me to see that, I need to go into my account and return to my normal role. Otherwise, you can't see it. So let me do that. I'm going back to my normal role as the admin. So let's go back here. If I click on it, this is what you will see. Click on it. That's what you'll see. Okay, and then you will click on add a new discussion topic and you know how to do that by now. So where is the teaming up? 
the teaming up is right here. Okay, let me click on it. Okay, and this is, I see someone has started it, Kyra. Excellent, has started this. Now she started topic 12, way to go, wow. That's amazing, I didn't expect this. I thought this was still closed, but that's great. So notice what um, Kyra, Kyra has done. I hope I pronounced your name correctly. I don't know if you're here today. <clears throat> Are you here? Uh, let me check, no you're not, okay. All right, so notice what she has done. <laughs> Amazing. She created a new topic based on her choice and she chose topic number 12. That's her debate topic. Do police, um, do police belong in schools? Okay, that's the topic she chose. And uh, she also gave you a description here. So if you wanna join her, you become a member of her team. You can do that, or you can choose another topic and wait for others to join you. So if you have a choice here, okay, let me show it to you again. You can either create a new group based on one of the 50 debates. You need to go into the debates and choose a topic and not 12 because notice 12 is already chosen. And once you do that, Others can join you, but if others don't join you, then you'll have to join somebody else. And that's how it works. Any questions about um, joining groups or teaming up? You'll have to try it. You might wanna go there right now and try it out for yourself. Let me know how it goes for you. Can you click on become a member just to see, please? Yes, of course. I click on become a member, but I'd rather you went there. It might be nice, Chilla. Okay, so I click on and become a member and it asks me, do you really want to become a member of the group, topic 12? And I will say yes. How do I say yes? I say yes by going into this. Okay, or I can cancel. It's up to me. So let me do that now. Clear all of it. I'm going to click on become a member. That's what's nice about Moodle. This. Okay, so now it says that your group has less members than required, minimum three. So now we're only two. Notice what I can do here, Chilla and others. I can now leave the group and start my own group. In other words, you have a choice. You can decide and then change your mind, which I love because students may change their minds. And why not allow people to change their minds? That's fine. So maybe I'll find another team and join them. But before I can join another team, I must leave this team. I cannot join a team unless I leave this one. And again, I have to confirm. Are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. Oh, great. Now I see another team by Rosemary. Yay, Rosemary. Good for you. So let me, oh, this looks great. Should cell phones and beepers. There aren't any beepers anymore, so it's just going to be cell phones be allowed in class. Great discussion. So yes, I'm going to choose this. Become a member. So I'm glad I left the other one. Sorry, Kara. I didn't mean to. Um, and then I'm going to become a member of Rosemary's. Now notice Rosemary has, you, your group has less members than required. We need to have one more person. And then we can start. So we can have all together six. Okay, six all together. But it says here that the minimum is three. So one more and then up to three. So between three and six for each group. All right, so I hope that's clear. Let me check the chat and see if there are any questions. Any questions about teaming up? I love this um, plugin or this uh, tool, this uh, teaming up tool. It's only on the Moodle, but I think it's a great way for kids. I use it with my um, young learners as well. We have a Moodle site that I created for the school. And um, 
I also added teaming up. So if you're using Moodle at your school, you might want to do this. If you'd like to use Moodle, uh, let me know. I can help you um, with that. But that's later on if you like. So I see there aren't any other questions. So let's go back to week three. So that's teaming up based on the 50 topics. Okay, so if you want to look at the topics, I guess Rosemary has because she chose. Uh, remember to go into the 50 topics. It's a PDF file. Prompts for kids, but I think it's not only for kids. Some of the topics are really, there are 50 topics. Okay, so if you start, there are the numbers, debate, and uh, each topic, read, read, debate. Okay, so you can follow that. I think it's nice. By the way, I don't print anything for my students. I, um, I share everything with them on, in our WhatsApp groups so that they can use their phones in the classroom and that's how they read from the screen on their phones or computers if they don't have uh, a phone. So what happens in each topic is that actually they're prompts and it helps the kids. Okay, learning new words, before and after, debate topic, looking at both sides. And this is the part that I uh, am passionate about, that they don't just do one side, each team has to do both. So each team has uh, for and against, or yes and no, not just one side, but they learn to look at both sides of a debate question. So should animals be used to test new products? Their ideas on yes, ideas on no, and then you add your own ideas. There's should cell phones and beepers. That's Rosemary's choice. Yeah, it's a great tool. I just love it. So again, uh, that's, and what I'm showing you in week three, exactly what I do. It's how I use, let's go back to the classroom. It's how I use uh, Google Slides with my students. Okay, so here we are with a debate. The instructions, I think, are quite clear. If not, please feel free to ask questions. Team up in groups according to topics. Create collaborative Google Slides. Uh, Nearpod or Google Slides, I would not, I'm gonna erase, delete Nearpods. I do not like Nearpods anymore. If you're using Nearpod, you might wanna continue. For me, it says there is no discussion yet. You're, no, of course, here, you're talking about, are you? Uh, Chilla, are you talking about teamwork and team learning? Can you click on become a member? Okay, let me do that for you. Okay, teaming up. Let's go. Um, I'll leave the group. Okay, I'm leaving you, Rosemary. I see someone else has joined. Maria, very good, Maria. Okay, so let me go, Chilla, keep asking your question. I may have missed it. Let me switch my role um, so I can see what happens to you as a student. Okay, this is what you will see. Create a new group, sorry. Okay, this is what you will see, Chilla. You'll see create a new group or you can become a member of a, an existing group. Does that answer your question? Let me make sure that there aren't, I don't see the groups. The groups, I have a nice, okay. I don't see the groups. You mean you don't see, are you on your phone or are you on a computer? And I know you're using Mac. You know, what you're saying is you don't see become a member. Is that what you mean, Chilla? Okay. Um, maybe your screen is small, so you need to move at the bottom. Is that a possibility? Let me see. Um, maybe it's on the right, and maybe you have a scroll bar at the bottom that you need, like I have at the side, there could be a scroll bar 
at the bottom where you need to move to the right. Is that the case? Let me know, Chilla, why you don't see. Actually, I can go in as you. Let me try something else and then I'll, maybe that'll help me. Okay, Chilla, let me try to find you. Okay, there you are. I'm going to go in as you, if you don't mind, if that's okay. And um, okay, I'm going to go in as you to see what you see or what you don't. What is going on there? Oh, but I need to change my role. Oh, you sent a screenshot. That's perfect. Okay, great. But I'm going to go in as you anyways, just to make uh, sure that we're seeing everything from your eyes. Okay, let me take a look at the photo and see what open file. Let's see what we see here. Okay. Uh, oh, you're in the wrong place. Okay. You're in the discussion forum. Okay, no problem. Okay, now I know where you are. Okay, so Chilla, this is where you go. You go into week three. Okay, I'm, I'm in as you. Go into week three, you scroll down. And as you go down, you'll see a discussion here about teaming up, the 50 topics, and then instructions. And then you'll see teaming up. Now it's not open for you. That's why you can't see it. It's not open for some reason because you didn't do the Google Docs for discussion. It's not complete. Why is it not complete? I do not know. Did you start a new discussion for the, um, okay, I'm gonna play around and show you a trick, but don't use it. You're gonna do it, right? You haven't done it for some reason. So let me call this um, test. You need to do it in order to be able to see this. So I'll call this, I'll call it Nelly. Okay, so you'll know that it's Nelly doing this. Nelly, I'm gonna call this Nelly, but you're not gonna do this. This is a trick. Um, okay, post a forum, all right. And then you're gonna to have to uh, respond to one other person, I believe. So make sure you do that. You're gonna do this after. You need to add your Google Docs and reflect like the others have done. So um, if you go into, there's Chilla. Okay, so if, I, if you go into Maria, for example, who was able to do that, Maria has added her Google Docs. Okay, here it is. Okay, she did the assignment and then um, they responded to her and I'm sure she responded to other people. Let's respond to Maria, okay? So I'm you and I'm allowing myself to respond. I'm gonna say, um, this is Nellie. Okay, so you respond there instead. Okay, this is Nelly. So we know that it, you're going to do it. Okay. No, that's okay. <laughs> I'm sure you will. <laughs> I'm sure you will. Uh, okay, so let me go back now to um, week three, and you'll see what happens now. Okay, so I did my work. Okay, so now it should be open. Okay, so let's go into week three and teaming up. There, see now it's available because I did the work. I didn't really do the work, okay? But none of you got to cheat like this, okay? This is only, um, okay? But you should know that your students can do this too. So you have to read all their things to make sure that they're not, they don't know what I know. Okay, so now you're gonna click on it, Chilla, and you'll be able to do it. Okay, so let's see, maybe you've done it already. Okay, so there you go. So now you should be able to see, create a new group. Okay, so thank you for having problems because this will probably help other people to realize that they have to do their work legally and not cheat. So now you can create a group or you can become a member of a group. Okay, so uh, that was very helpful, I'm sure for others. Let me just get rid of that the drawings, and we'll go back. All right. Okay, so now you can go on. You can do your work, 
or you can go on before it's up to you but you're a hard worker chilla so i, I tr totally trust you and i noticed that chilla has seven levels that's very good all right so let's go on we're going to use your account all right so that's how you team up next that's not the end that's just the beginning next next to screencast-o-matic you might want to learn a little bit about screencast-o-matic if you don't know and then there is uh, how to use screencast-o-matic on your google presentation so watch this video after that there is team presentation using audio and this is where you submit your work but notice what it says here team up using the group activity uh, to the debate topics each member of the group adds a google slide to the google presentation you add an image you can use canva of course for your images on each of your slides no text no text me too rosemary no text okay this is what my students do too the idea is to speak through the images and not to add text they write to the speaker notes at the bottom of each slide so i can correct their work um no text ensure that the images relate to your ideas for for and against each team has to add slides for for and slides for against you add speaking notes to each of your slides. If you don't know where that is, it's at the bottom of each slide. If you're on the phone, you can use the phone. You have to allow this on the phone. And you add speaking notes to each of the slides. You record your voice using Screencast-O-Matic, or you can record your voice because you're gonna have different voices there. You record your voice using an audio. You can use your phone or you can use your computer and you add it under you insert it to the slide you publish the google presentation for all to view you share the link of your google presentation and that's it so ah like a pecha kucha exactly no it's fine i think yeah that's how you spell it the way it sounds pecha kucha exactly for and against yeah it's a lot of fun but everybody has to add the audio to their video. And let me show you how that's done. Uh, we need to go to Google. Have any of you used Google Slides? Have added uh, Google Slides, audio to Google Slides? Just let me know in the chat if you've added it. Google Slides. Audio. Okay, here are my Google Slides. I'll show you how it's done. Okay, uh, I think this is probably my students' work, or maybe not. Yeah, here's one. Um, I do all my Google Slides. I've been doing Google Slides, collaborating and working together on Google Slides for years, years. I mean, things have changed, but my work on Google Slides has not. So uh, this is some of the work that I do, my students do on the planet. They create um, together. Um, and, and the only um, text I would say is just things like clean air, clean water, we discussed that. Okay, so this is on climate change. So actually the photos don't say very much, or they could say, but it's actually the conversations. This is what my, one of my students added that. Um, this is where you add audio okay you go into insert at the top okay insert i went over that okay does everybody see that there's file edit view share don't forget to share it with your team okay you need your gmails everybody's gmails share don't forget to share it with me as well okay share it with me with editing rights okay not viewing rights editing rights and this time you don't have to share it with the whole class, but you can if you want to. You shouldn't be afraid um, that people edit your work. They might find typos or different things. So I always encourage people to edit, but I know that people are afraid sometimes. I share all my work 
but people are afraid to touch it and and they shouldn't be okay you should feel free okay so let's go into insert and see the audio are you ready i know a lot of people don't know maria that there is an audio but here it is okay under insert there's image of course text and audio there's also video you click on the audio and then notice i've got a lot of audio here um things that were shared with me acid rain somebody shared with me i don't know what that is okay these students shared or recent ones oh wow there are a lot of recent ones so all you need to do is you um, speak on your computer you add it to google and then you simply share it on your slide any questions about adding audio how do you add audio i think the best way is with audacity how many of you have used audacity it's completely free that's one way of recording if you're recording on your phone which is the best way to record record your audio on your phone and then share it with your gmail and then add it to your doc okay so the steps could be uh speak on your phone everybody can do that and the kids can do it too speak on your phone share the link okay share the recording your audio share the audio recording uh to your gmail with yourself okay yourself and then insert it insert it on your slide okay so those are the steps i mean in the old days we used to use audacity if you're using your computer you might use audacity any questions about adding audio Let me know in the chat if there are any questions on your unless you're on in the um session and you're not able to add this week i could make a list of the issues you addressed this live session some of the learners have problems on social media if they did not watch the video no haven't used to ask it um barbara but can you use your phone? How many of you use your phones? Do you use your phone to record audio? Do you know how? I don't know. I guess everybody does. Don't, don't you know how you record your voice? I suggest you do it like that. That's the easiest way. You take your phone. Where's my phone? It's not here right now. Oh, it's being recharged it's okay so you take your phone and you record your voice i don't know if you're using an iphone or an android every phone has this ability let me know if that's a problem on the iphone it's at the top and then it, there's a recorder here i'm starting mine i'm on my phone hi this is nelly and i'm recording my voice screen recording video saved to photos oh okay that was the wrong one that was a screen recorder You could also use your laptop's voice recorder. Yes, you can. You can do that. You can also use um, Screencast-O-Matic, I believe. 
you can use Screencast-O-Matic for and only um, record the audio. That's a possibility. SoundCloud. Okay, how many use SoundCloud? Shall I use that iRecorder? Thank you. Great. Okay, so feel free to share that with your team. Excellent. Excellent. Very good, Chilla. Share that with your team so everybody knows how to insert audio to the slide. So you go to a slide, you go into insert audio, and you simply add your voice. All right, let's go back to our course. Okay, we're still here under Chilla, so everything is from her viewpoint. Okay, so there it is, teaming up. We've done that. Then there's Screencast-O-Matic and uh, the team presentation using audio, the reflection, and then the final uh, task of week three is peer learning. And that's what you're doing. So actually, you're experiencing peer learning. What Chilla did right now, and Rosemary, and Barbara, and who else is here, what you did is peer learning. You're helping each other. It's not helping, it's actually teaching. You're teaching each other. So Chilla has taught me. I didn't know about um, Clipe and iRecorder. I didn't know about that. Now I know. Um, so that's peer learning. We're learning from each other. And you've been doing this for the past two weeks. You've been learning from each other. And I encourage you to read. And the more you read what others write, the more you will learn. Because it's not learning from the teacher, from one person. It's learning from the whole class. And that's the idea behind this. And if you think of virtual classes and classes around the world with teachers around the world, like this Evo session, you've been learning a lot. Not from me, I'm one person. The teacher is one person. The idea is to collaborate and to learn for the kids to learn from each other. So peer learning is very, very vital. If you click on peer learning as I'm doing now, you will see the following. There are two articles here, but there are many, many more articles on peer learning. Maybe not enough. Maybe you'd like to research peer learning. Try it in your classes and conduct an action research. Let me know if you're interested in that because I also teach action research and I've been doing this for uh, over 20 years. So how to implement peer learning is very important. How do you do in your classes? And in general about peer learning, you can download the folder or each of these PDF files, read it. And after you read it, you're going to answer the following question. And remember that you've experienced peer learning. So read the two articles and reflect, respond to the following questions. And don't forget to respond to each other. That's how you get your badge. You can't just start a discussion. You need to also respond to someone else's discussion thread. So what is the value of peer learning? Think of yourself. What have you learned from your peers in this EVO session? Or maybe other EVO sessions, I don't know. What have you learned about peer learning? Hey, what is the value? How can you include it in teamwork? How can you include peer learning in teamwork. Because after you do the peer or the collaborative slide presentation, you will get an idea of what it's like to learn in a team. So teamwork and think of an activity that includes peer learning with your students. And of course this is for next week. Next week, uh, we'll be talking about forms and how we can use them in the classroom. So let me know if there are any questions. And if you can't think of any right now, feel f and as you work, feel free to go into the support form. Uh, Chilla and others, even if you don't have a question, you might want to go into the support form and answer somebody else's questions. Notice Chilla has 
two uh, digital badges right now, but she still owes me or owes us, not really me, owes us her work on Google Docs, and she will do that, I'm sure. So let me know if there are any questions. I'm going to let you, how much time do we have? Nope, actually we're, we've ended, but let's see if there are any questions. I'm gonna go into the chat, let's see. Uh, yay, I'm a rookie. <laughs> That's good, Rosemary. And there are apps, okay, I don't see any questions. So feel free to ask them as we go and answer others. Because remember, it's not only about the tools, it's about teaming up, collaboration, having a collaborative mindset, which will turn your students and yourself into caring individuals and your mind will grow. You will have a more open mindset to others and it won't just be, and your students won't just think about themselves. I know there are a lot of students that fear teamwork, but they'll learn the value of peer learning and team learning once they start using Google Slides and other tools for collaboration. So thank you everyone. Thank you for joining us today. And we'll see you um, online during the week. Thank you. And feel free to share what you learned with your peers. If anyone wants to copy the chat, you can do that. You can save chat on your computer system. and take a look at it.